Now, I have a little piece of wood and a big piece of wood, and I have screws that I have drilled through them. This means that I've only got a little tiny bit of area that's touching because it's just the point of that screw, which means that I can set the face down if it's wet, like these, and there's just going to be a tiny little place where it touches, so that way I can do all sides, the front, the back, and the corners, all at once and just rotate it, and that way I won't have to wait for one side to dry before I can paint the other side. This is a plague of painters everywhere, and in my mind, a rather simple fix. As you notice, that the grain is running horizontal. So that's something that you always want to look with. You want to paint with the grain. Another thing that you'll notice is when I was painting these two, I was going pretty fast and using up and down strokes. And one of the techniques that I was doing, as you could see, is that I would dip the brush, clear up my extra, and then I would start in the middle of my stroke and go back and forth. This way, you don't have a big glob of paint right where you start or where you finish. It's hidden away in the middle, and then it's evenly dispersed as you continue with your painting. When I go back and forth, because I keep hitting that middle area, that's distributing the paint much, much neater. And when you lift up, it's like an airplane taking off. You don't just stop, let it sit there, and bring up because it leaves a mark, you take off gently, and not with a big flick, because then you'll end up splattering paint everywhere, but just nice and gradually, so it's like an airplane, take off and land, take off, land, take off, land. I actually learned a little bit of this from my father when he taught me how to paint, but it got reinforced when I was taking a drafting class and we were using those crazy old-style ink pens where you have to dip it in ink. And if you started too hard in your lines that you're making, especially if you're drawing a circle or something, you'd end up with this terrible blob. And if you stopped and then lifted up, you'd always blot your ink. So this way, your ink comes off nice and smooth. I always go across the edge with the brush at an angle, not straight across, not flat across, but at an angle. At 45, you kind of hit the best of both worlds. Because if I went straight across, you can see right there all those little bubbles where it missed. Do that nice 45, those bubbles disappear, and you're in the grain. That's it. In like Flynn. A favorite movie of mine. I love James Coburn. And then running down the edges, long smooth strokes like always. Give yourself at least an inch of space. That way you've got some places to take off and land. If you see any drips on the side, clean them up now. Don't let them dry for later because that's a place that you'll have to scrape that off or you'll end up with a big paint bump. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. The first couple of coats don't lay down a lot when I'm going back and forth, but it deposits it nice and slow over time, so that way you get a nice smooth surface, you use less paint, and you get a better surface finish. As you can see, I've got a nice even coat, and from a couple of feet away, it looks pretty good. When you zoom in really close, you can see that the wood grain is peeking through right there. That, in the painter's world, is what we call a holiday. As in, looks like the painter had a holiday and took a break. So, always, when you're done, go back a second time with a brush and just do some touch-ups. And remember, long, smooth strokes. And then just a couple of finishing strokes. This is what's known as a dry brush technique, where you have just a little bit of paint on your brush, and you bring it over. This smooths out all of your brush strokes, gives you a more even surface, roughs up the texture just a little bit, 
so that when you go in for your sanding or your final, the paint has something a little bit better to stick to. A lot of small coats is way better than one thick coat. It dries better, it's less likely to peel up, and that bond, I mean, this paint is really, really small, and so if you paint one coat, let it dry, paint one coat, let it dry, you'll build up these layers that are bonded way better. One big thick one, you'll have internal places where it'll dry a little bit and then grab onto that. You'll get these weird raised edges and it'll be really tacky and gummy and it's likely to just all come off in one because the top and the bottom are drying because the bottom, the wood is absorbing the moisture and that's drying. And the top, the air is, but then in the middle you've got this layer that's not able to have that process of removing moisture go through and you end up with a really bad finish. So less is more and more is better. Well, you get it.